Space is awesome. Everybody loves space. But in Minecraft, the closest thing we have is the end, which is still not close at all. So if we cannot go to space, why not have space? come to us. So it's what I did. I made meteorites for Minecraft and as usual, I went a little overboard. You can spawn these with commands and aim them wherever you'd like, just like gas fireballs. I didn't like how these guys looked at me, so um, yeah, you can see. I can throw it to them. <laughs> but let's be honest, it's kind of tedious to get a lot this way, even though you can do it. It doesn't look half as cool as it should be. So meteorites come from space. I think we established that point quite well. So it would be kind of dumb to have them just pop up in the sky and come from the skies because that's just unrealistically absurd. So instead, let's just have a direct magical doorway to space. <laughs> when you use this item, it'll open a space rift with a very cool effect and meteorites will start coming through it. Now, these meteorites are pretty small, quite slow and not that impactful, but don't let that demotivate because we're gonna get to it in a minute and it's gonna be um, quite the show. <laughs> So as you can see, despite them not currently being extremely powerful, they affect the landscape in a very specific way. They convert some blocks into an arrangement of magma, netherite and uh, ancient debris. You know, you gotta you gotta make it worth it to put your life on the line like that. But the most important thing is that they tend to throw blocks around, as you can see. Uh, it's a pretty cool effect meant to replicate how meteorites, you know, leave a giant trail and crater behind them. Now let's get into the fun part of this. The customization. I've made four fully customizable parameters that modify how the meteorites behave. Frequency, spawn radius, speed, and explosion power. First is the frequency. Basically what it does is it handles the probability a meteorite will spawn out of the portal every tick. So for instance, if I put it to 50 every tick, the game will say, oh, I have one chance out of 50 of spawning a meteorite. Which means that if you put a higher value, well, meteorites are just not gonna spawn very often. But if we put to something like five, um, yeah, yeah, good luck, <laughs> good, good luck surviving that. If we put it to one, we'll get one meteorite per tick, uh, which may or may not turn your land into a Swiss cheese, a very scorched Swiss cheese. <laughs> oh my god, look at that, it's the sound too, <laughs> oh my god, that is just terrifying. <laughs> and of course, if we put it to zero, <laughs> yeah, of course the game is going to crash. Oh yeah, yeah that, that world is not joinable anymore. <laughs> The second parameter is the spawn radius. Basically, it handles the random offset at which the meteorites will go. So for instance, the default value is 10, which means it will have a bit of an offset when it shoots the meteorites. But if we put it to something like zero, it will then absolutely have no offset. And if we increase the frequency, you can see that the meteorites will follow all the same vector, which means if you're very angry at something, uh, <laughs> in particular, or you just want to dig a giant tunnel, um, that is your best choice. <laughs> However, if you put it to something pretty high, like 100, uh, you can see meteorites are gonna spawn everywhere, including behind the thing. That is totally intentional. And yeah, it will bombard a higher radius. It's just gonna be pure random luck. It's still terrifying though. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, with this parameter, you may have meteorites that just fly into the horizon and will <laughs> lag the sh out of your server. Oh my God, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Oh my god, and if we put the render distance to higher, yeah, you can see just them fading in the distance. Oh, hey there, buddy. What's up? Lost your home? <laughs> That's right, run! Run for your life! <laughs> How? There's no way. Dude, what? Well, I mean, okay, you deserve to live. <laughs> now let's get to the other two parameters, which influence how the meteorites actually are and not how the space rift spawns them. Okay, first, the speed, which, as its name suggests, tells the meteorite which speed it should go. As you can see, that is a speed of one. It's actually pretty slow. But if we put it to something like two, well, you'll see the new meteorites are just two times faster. And we can then put it to three, which means the meteorites will be three times faster, but the most interesting part is how it changes how the blocks fly. Given the flying blocks that are impacted by the explosion of the meteorite are given the same speed as the meteorite, you'll see that blocks tend to be thrown a bit further when a meteorite is much faster. If you want to compare it to like one of the lowest speed... Oh my god, this is gonna take forever to land. Come on, run! You still have time to escape! No! 
Run! Now as you can see, it sends blocks flying in the air, kinda, but not very far. But if we put it back to something big like five... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh no! As you can see, it stands them flying pretty far, and they're still surviving. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the fourth parameter, the explosion power. Now, for this one, I've got something pretty cool to show you. First, as you can guess it, obviously cranking up the explosion power is gonna have more of an effect on the landscape, sending more blocks flying, overall having more destruction. Now, obviously, if we make the meteorites pretty slow, the blocks are just gonna fly a bit in the air, but, you know, not too far. But if we make them super fast again... As you can see, it's uh, <laughs> it's a pretty good way to relocate land. But that's not everything I want to show you about the explosion power. So here we have this giant wall of shroom light, and if we spawn a space reef facing it, you'll see that the meteorites that will come through it will not exactly stop. You see, they'll continue through. That's because the way this works is that when a meteorite hits a block, it just doesn't explode and disappear. It goes through the block, explodes, and loses one explosion power, which means that it will continue its course, and once it hits a block again, it will create another explosion, although a little less powerful, and continue the cycle. Which means that if we put a series of walls like these, make the explosion power up something like five, and then spawn a rift in front of them, They'll just power through the wall, losing power gradually, of course. But I mean, just just look at this. This is so satisfying. Okay, this is gonna get laggy real quick. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention, um... <laughs> These meteorites don't care if your block is blast resistant or not. It will just ignore the blast resistance and, uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll... <laughs> It'll just dig a hole straight through bedrock. Putting a bit too much power, too much frequency, and a very, very small spawn radius. It'll just give you a terror soup for a sequel map. <laughs> now, naturally, the portability of the space rift allows you to summon it as a personal weapon wherever you need it and whenever you need it. So, for instance, if you're in a pickle inside a mansion. <laughs> oh my god, oh yeah. It's already reached the bottom level. <laughs> Oh no. But yeah, anyway, we were speaking about portability, so uh, so let's just assume for a moment you're stuck in an ocean monument. Can't find your way out? Well, nothing more easy than just placing a space rift. <laughs> and uh... Yeah. You found your way out. And naturally, the same applies if you're stuck in a mine shaft or a cave, although you might want to steer clear of the explosion radius, but... <laughs> Yeah, like that. <laughs> but naturally, why should it stop at the other world? You see, a lot of people like to get on the bedrock roof, and I completely understand that. So that's why I made it this way. It's just so, you know, for instance, in the Never, in case you need- Oh my god. Oh my god, the amount- Oh, there you go! Falling bedrock! Oh my- <laughs> Oh, this is amazing! So yeah, there, there you go. Just... Oh my god, that is so botched. What have I done? And the spires that are just built from all the falling blocks. <laughs> now that looks cool as well. You know, there's also one thing that annoys me. Wait, did you despawn? Hello? Ah, never mind. <laughs> now, that's a true bastion remnant. There you go. Now that is a real rune structure. Now, speedrunners. This one is for you. Never thought that beating the dragon the old-fashioned way with a sword and a bow is just too boring. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh yeah, uh... <laughs> That's one end crystal gone. <laughs> oh yeah, never mind, the portal as well. Okay, I got all the end crystals, I think, uh, and a big chunk of the island. God damn it, where are you going? There we go! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> And it continues a small meteorite that just ends up here. Yeah, obviously, yeah, I- Oh my god, it took a whole chunk of this. I hate shulkers. Wow, okay, it just collapsed it, okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's concept. If you did, well, you're in luck, because I have another video coming with this mod, and, uh, it's gonna be fun. Anyway, until that video, have a nice one.